All right, guys, so now we got our frame done. You can see we kind of treated the whole thing front to back. This is all the new stuff we just put in. And it continues all the way over. Refurb the, st the skid plate a little bit. Put the center skid plate in. We got all that done all the way up front. And we kind of just threw a quick coat of paint on the control arms. And as you can see, we went all the way up front with this one. So with it now being all back together, suspension is all back together. All the uh, accessories, the exhaust is welded back on. Everything is currently in its correct location and we should be good. So now we can tackle that electrical problem that we have with the headlights. All right, guys, so now that we got the frame out of the way, the one last thing that we have to check on is the, the lighting in this thing. Now, it's had fog lights run in it because the original lighting, the headlights, high beams, low beams, none of that stuff works. And we did some, you know, basic diagnosis first to figure out what it was. And I figured out what it was and ordered all the parts up and got them here. But I'm going to take you guys through step by step exactly what it is that we did to figure out what the heck is going on with these lights. Now, at first glance, you want to say, oh, we'll check the fuses, check this, check that. But we had a little bit of a little bit of a pre-warning here in the fact that somebody has already gone in and butt connected these things together which i can just literally pull out with my fingers so number one problem is that we've got what looks like a repair we've got a bare wire here and a few other odds and ends so we're going to start basically there and i don't know how far you guys can see down into that connector but right down in here, there is some pretty serious corrosion going on. And if I pull the connector off the headlight bulb, you can see that the connector looks pretty nasty and it's got a whole bunch of crap in it and whatever else. And even the headlight itself is pretty nasty. But what I want to do is show you guys something that you're going to want to do right off the bat before you even bother messing with this wiring. And that is trying to get your camera focused down on the headlight so that you can see what I'm doing. And of course this bar is in the way, but all right. So now that we got you guys in the vicinity of the headlight, the first thing that you're going to want to do. And the reason why I think someone had a hard time with this one and did a whole bunch of wiring stuff is you want to test your bulb because if your bulb's bad and you're, chasing a wiring gremlin you're going to be here a while so what we're going to use is our handy little power probe which by pushing this little switch right here we can put 12 volts directly to the light and with our little ground right here we can go directly to the bulb so we're going to ground the bulb and then we're going to see if the bulb actually works and you guys should be able to see it once i uh get in here all right, so we're on the bulb right now on the low beam, and we have no low beam. Do we have high beam? No. All right, so we'll switch these leads around a little bit. Do we have high beam? No. Do we have low beam? Nope. So, guys... This bulb is no good. So being that this bulb is no good, you will be officially chasing your tail. And we've already gone ahead and done the test on the driver's side one. The driver's side one has high beam, but no low beam. So now we know that we have two bad headlights in this thing. We actually have bad headlight bulbs on top of the bad wiring. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in, we're going to fix all this wiring up, and then we're going to put brand new headlight bulbs in it, and everything should be good to go. So let's start that process. All right, so basically what we're going to start by doing is taking this connector, and we're going to chop it off. But we want to take a look at the back of the connector and figure out where our wires go, as there is still some connected. And when it comes to our new connector, our new connector has three identical colored wires. So those identical colored wires are gonna get us nowhere when we have to figure out what's going on with the wiring itself. So 
If we look at the back of the connector here, we can see that our red wires, which are our low beams, are on the right hand side. We have our ground right here that broke off. That's on the left hand side. And then we have our purple wires, which go on the top, and those are the high beams. Now, the reason why there's two, two, and one is that the way that this headlight harness works is the main power feed comes into this headlight and then goes on the harness and goes across to the other side over there to feed that headlight. So all we have to do is cut all these wires, wire in the new connector, and uh, we'll be good to go. And of course, red right, purple broken, just get rid of that guy. And now what we need to do is we need to check all these wires because there was a lot of corrosion on them. So we're gonna strip these back and figure out if we've got corrosion that we need to take care of, which I'm almost certain that we will have. Oh yeah. So you can probably see all the dust that's poofing off of this stuff. See that? So what we're going to do is we have a decent amount of wire on our new plugs so we can afford to lose some wiring on the harness here so we're going to cut back about an inch and then we're going to strip them again and see if we have any better wire which eh not great but much better than it was and we'll do the same on the purples Cut those back about an inch. The same on the black. Strip all these back and make sure they're good. Now we're getting some pretty nasty stuff in there. But I'll show you guys how we can take care of that. Oof. All right, the ground actually looks halfway decent, but let me grab something, show you guys how we're gonna take care of all that nasty corrosion. All right, so being that we don't wanna to cut too, too far back into the harness, we're going to use a piece of sandpaper. Now our wire is halfway decent, it's just a little bit black, and I don't know how well you can see that. But before we twist any of these strands together, we're gonna to take a piece of sandpaper, and just clean up this wire. There we go, we got some nice shiny copper in there. So we'll do that again on this one. And we'll just repeat that process for all of them. This actually works really, really well. And considering we're going to be soldering these, and covering them in a nice weatherproof heat shrink. So make sure all these are super clean so we can get the solder to stick to them. And now we're gonna take our new plug and we're probably gonna cut off, you know, a good six inches of wire because we don't need all that. I don't need that extra either. And then we're going to strip off a bit here. All right, so we got these all stripped. And now before we go ahead and solder this stuff, we're going to do what I always forget to do. And throw some heat shrink on there. Now what's cool about this particular heat shrink 
is that it actually has like a a gel in it that activates when you heat it. So what you end up with is like a almost like a glue that will weatherproof this entire connection that we're making here so that we don't have this problem again. And it's also a five to one heat shrink, so it will shrink five times smaller than what you see right there. So now again, we're gonna take our connector, and remember we had red on the right, black on the left, purple on the top, and we're literally just going to put it all together like that. Maybe strip a little bit more of this insulation off so we got some way to bind these wires together. All right, so we'll take the red right, and we're going to do this a little bit differently than you're used to in the fact that we're going to twist all this together as one unit here, and then we're going to solder that together. Got to wait for our soldering iron to heat up so we got the red on the right we get the black on the left purple on top. Now, I will always solder connections like this, and it's always a good idea to solder connections like this, because headlights are high amperage drawing and any extra resistance is going to cause unwanted heat. And unwanted heat is going to cause things to melt. It can cause fuses to blow. It can cause current overdraws. It can cause all kinds of stuff. So you want to make sure that any of these connections that you do are super good and super well connected. Because ultimately, not only does this feed this one headlight, but these wires also run across the truck and feed the other side. So if we don't get these connections on point, we're not only gonna have a problem with just this headlight, but we're gonna have a problem with both headlights. So the more secure this connection is, the better off we're gonna be. Now we'll do the same for the purples. And then again for the ground. And I don't know if you could see it in the video, but the grounds for these headlights are pretty simple because they're right here. They're literally on this bolt right here. So if you're having a headlight issue and your bulbs are good, then you can check this ground, make sure this ground is good, and then, you know, check your wiring, your connectors, and your harness. So now we're going to take our shrink wrap, bring it up over the top here, try to center our joint right in the middle of it. And then we'll use our little torch. Shrink this up.
All right, so there we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go grab a new headlight. We'll plug it into here and we'll see if we actually have headlights now. All right, so you guys will be able to see whether or not we have headlights before I do. There's low beam and high beam. All right, so now that we know that that worked, we know that our fuses are good, we know our headlight relays are good, and we now know that our wiring to the first headlight is good. Now, what we have to do is the exact same process on the driver's side, pop the headlight in and make sure everything is good. Now, I did remove the original piece of, can't find it, but the original piece of um, wire loom that was over this wiring. And all we're gonna do is we're actually going to electrical tape it with some really good 3M electrical tape just to kind of button this harness up. We'll pop the new headlight in. We'll do the same on the passenger side. And I think we're gonna be good. Okay, we went ahead and did the exact same thing on the driver's side. A nice little close up of the, uh, the heat shrink. And you can see that little shiny stuff there is actually the, uh, the internal weatherproofing that this heat shrink has in it. So those connections will be watertight, completely good to go. We'll shoot a little bit of either dielectric grease or fluid film on these when we plug them into the lights. And we got both of our headlights replaced. So we're good to go there. And now all we got to do is tape this one up. I'm going to plug it in and then we'll uh, see if our headlights work. All right, guys, let's see if we have headlights. Low beam, looking good. High beam, also looking good. All righty, so we have headlights and it was literally just a simple fact that Number one, both bulbs were blown. So no matter what kind of wiring we did, we wouldn't have gotten anywhere. And number two, the wiring was completely toasted. I was trying to see if I didn't throw out one of the other plugs to really show you a close up, but I did. But you know, that was par for the course with a Jeep like this that sits, you get a little bit of water on those connections. It causes corrosion, the wires break, they corrode down low, creates high resistance, starts blowing fuses, you know, the grounds go bad, all kinds of stuff like that. And that's one of the biggest things, you know, with electrical work is that you have to be on the lookout for not the obvious. You know, the obvious thing is, hey, we blew a fuse. And, you know, the second obvious thing might be, hey, the light bulb's no good. You know, the, the bulb burnt out. And the less likely is that, there's a whole bunch of corrosion on the wires that you can't see or a broken wire somewhere. So it takes a little bit of, you know, testing around and messing around and, and trying to find, you know, the circuit itself that you're working with and then tracing the circuit back into seeing where you have power. Now, before I started this video, I actually turned the headlights on and checked for power at the broken wires and I had power. So I knew that the circuit itself was good. Now, had there not been power on that circuit, I would have had to start searching further back. And further back means going into the power box, the power distribution box over here. And if I didn't have power there, then it would be searching the relay for the headlights. And then if the relay was good and I still didn't have power, we go to the multifunction switch on the column, which controls the lights, the wipers, all that stuff. And a lot of times those will go bad. So there's a whole bunch of different things that this could have been. And luckily for us, we didn't have to do too much tracing. It was literally two bad bulbs and some bad wiring. So hopefully that helped you guys out a little bit. And hopefully that also showed you the correct way to do um, vehicular wiring. In the fact that it's going to be exposed to the elements, you can't use wire nuts. So all you electricians out there that love using wire nuts in your cars, please stop. Second thing, butt connectors. They work great on an interior application where there's no chance of the elements coming in contact with it, but exterior of the car, an open butt connector is gonna last you a year if you're lucky, especially in the Northeast. So you need to make sure you're soldering all your connections, you need to make sure that you're heat shrinking and weatherproofing all of your connections. 
and uh, you know, you'll be good to go. This thing will last another 15, 20 years with that wiring job that we did. So with everything that we're fixing on this Jeep already, you know, we might as well get everything correct. But I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I am going to go edit this and put it up for you guys tonight. So you can watch it on Labor Day when you're not doing anything but watching my videos on YouTube. So for that, I say thank you. And uh, guys, enjoy your Labor Day. Be careful. If you're going to drink, don't drive. Find a designated driver. Have a great weekend, everybody.